Hello everybody, this is Simon Kels of YouTube. What's up? It's the start of a new playthrough today, even though you're probably looking at the screen like, what the fuck? Um, simple reason, really. Because um, this playthrough is on an older console. So, this console has no dashboard. So, I can just turn on the card, and then boom, we're in. Um, this game does have an opening cutscene, though. Which I'm just going to sit, and uh, sit and watch with you guys, and uh, observe what's going on. So, prepare to be astounded as we put up the game. I'll see you on the other side of the cast. Nuclear weapons disposal facility on Shadow Moses Island in Alaska's Fox Archipelago was attacked and captured by next generation special forces being led by members of Foxhound. They are demanding that the government turn over the remains of Big Boss, and they say that if their demands are not met within 24 hours, they'll launch a nuclear weapon. two mission objectives. First, you're to rescue DARPA Chief Donald Anderson and the President of Armstead, Kenneth Baker. Both are being held as hostages. Secondly, you're to investigate whether or not the terrorists have the ability to make a nuclear strike and stop them if they do. What's the insertion method? We'll approach the disposal facility by sub. And then... We'll launch a one-man SDV. High-tech special forces unit Foxhound, your former unit, and one that I was the commander of. So they're still around. There are six members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity. Psycho Mantis with his powerful psychic abilities. Sniper Wolf, the beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. Decoy Octopus, master of disguise. Falcon Raven. Giant and Shaman, and Revolver Ocelot, specialist in interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. And finally, in charge of them, Foxhound Squadron, Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake. This is a one-man sneaking mission. 
weapons and equipment OSB. Yes. This is a top secret black op. Don't expect any official support. With that cutscene, you're more than likely know what it is. Welcome everyone to Metal Gear Solid 1 Between Snakes, the version remade for the Nintendo GameCube of the original PS1 classic. Oh shit! <laughs> well, there's some stories uh, resigned to this, and I'm actually going to tell you mostly about them while I set the options here. The reason I picked this version um, is really very simple. I don't have a PlayStation 3 anymore. So I really can't play the original anyway. Um, when I did, um, which was last year, I did announce at the end of Metal Gear Solid 4 that I would eventually be going back to Metal Gear Solid 1 and playthroughing it. Little did I know that 2013 was probably going to be one of the busiest years in gaming ever. Um, I finished Metal Gear Solid 4, I think the uploads finished in March. Uh, I don't think there was anything else in March. Um, April came, um, I've always, uh, yeah, excuse me. I was actually doing Metal Gear uh, Rising Revengeance at the time as well. Um, Aliens Colonial Marines had actually put a dent into my upload kind of schedule for Metal Gear Solid Rise, uh, Metal Gear Rising rather, and Metal Gear Solid 4, I was doing both at the time. Because I'd already covered Metal Gear Solid 3 and Metal Gear Solid 2 for the PlayStation 3 and the HD collection. Um, <clears throat> And after, after March, everything was just getting done. I think in April, I planned to just do The Walking Dead and maybe fit in Metal Gear Solid 1 if I could, but then Injustice Gods Among Us came out. Um, I can't really remember what I did in May, but I think the one thing I did do was Resident Evil 4, and then Resident Evil Revelations came out. In June was the start of my Sonic Marathon, uh, which consisted of Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic 4, Sonic CD, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, and Sonic Generations. That took me through up to August because of course The Last of Us had come out in June as well. Plus, in, in about mid-August, I'd actually switched my cable provider. Um, so that gave me like two weeks loss on that. <clears throat> um, truth be told, um, and I never really told anyone this, I was actually going to do Metal Gear Solid 1 as a playthrough alongside Bioshock Infinite. Because I had planned to do Bioshock Infinite at the time. as a kind of a filler week before the hardcore gaming season. It was kind of the last games I wanted to do. I ran into camera troubles, if you watched my uh, channel update of last September, I ran into camera troubles where I watched Samuel's games play and his camcorder looked absolutely sick. And I just thought a camcorder would have been better for recording. Boy how wrong I was, because my camcorder that I bought sucked. It sucked ass. My main problem with this camera initially was that I couldn't figure out how to fix the focus on it. Um, basically, every time the game went to a black screen, um, it would fizzle out and it would completely wash out and for a few seconds, you wouldn't be able to see shit. Um, so, I really thought I couldn't fix it. I did everything and I just couldn't fix it at all. And let's not forget in February I had Tomb Raider as well to come out, I think. Tomb Raider came out around February, March time as well. I actually just remembered that. Uh, Tomb Raider being on Lara Chronicles. Um, so I traded in this, ca uh, this digital camera, which I'm still using right now. Got a camcorder and boy it sucked. It was worse. The screen was just absolutely washed out with shit and the text you couldn't even read in most cases. So it probably proves that my camcorder searching skills completely sucked. Luckily I was able to buy this camera back and I actually figured out about a couple of weeks later that um, uh, that there is a focus button just above the recording uh, button which actually adjusts the focus and all I had to do was move the slider to the point where it didn't fizzle out anymore. So I figured that out. Um, I bought it back, started Bioshock Infinite, started Metal Gear Solid 1 and then lost parts in my Bioshock Infinite playthrough due to the computer just not downloading them probably for some reason and that was lost and then I just decided I gotta take a break because it was all just confusing and I took a break and Metal Gear Solid 1 was aside the back burner as well 
And then the ho I took a break for the whole of October, which began the gaming season, the hardcore gaming season, with Formula 1 2013 for PlayStation 3. A week later was Beyond Two Souls, again for PlayStation 3. Uh, then WWE 2K14 came out, which I wanted to get and play for the 14 years of 30 years of 14, 30 years of WrestleMania mode. And then I had a, a, a little stint on Call of Duty Ghosts. Um, and then two weeks later, the PlayStation 4 came out, and of course I had to trade in my Xbox 360, my PlayStation 3, and all the consoles games to uh, buy the PlayStation 4 for as little as possible because I don't make much money, um, unfortunately because um, money doesn't grow on trees, <laughs> I guess. And that obviously left uh, me ha having no way to um, play through Metal Gear Solid 1, which I was pretty gutted about. Because today is March 17th. This Friday is going to be the release of the prequel to Metal Gear Solid 5, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zero. And I've not covered three of the Solid series. This one, Metal Gear Solid Peace War game, and Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. Now I'm doing this, uh, this playthrough today, so Metal Gear Solid 1 will eventually be covered by the end of this. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, I had been on and off about doing, but I eventually decided not to, and play through the game. I wanted to play the game, but um, I, didn't, I really didn't like the fact that it was mostly RPG elements. I mean, in a Metal Gear Solid game, when you've played Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, and then you play Peace Walker and you think, Huh? What is this? It's, it just makes no sense. It's nothing like Metal Gear whatsoever. It's just really weird. I mean, the stuff in the missions was simple enough. It was just the RPG elements of having to put people in, like the, the certain uh, sections of your base and all that stuff, and it was just complete weird. Um, so, I never did Peace Walker, and I probably never will do Peace Walker unless the PlayStation Now comes out in the summer and Peace Walker is one of the games that I eventually get. So that'll have to wait until further notice, I guess. Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops is on a PlayStation Portable, but and I could buy it for PlayStation Vita, but even if I wanted to, I couldn't play through the game anyway, because recording a handheld is impossible with a digital camera. Um, you most certainly need direct capture for handheld consoles, and I know that firsthand. So, with those two, uh, two of the missing links in the Metal Gear Solid series, Completing this game really doesn't affect the fact of Pain and Ground Zeroes as much because this is a totally different storyline. It's the story of Solid Snake and Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain centers around the big boss era nine years after Peace Walker. So where he's doing this game doesn't really affect the story as such. I feel I still need to cover it because I did play, obviously, I did play through Metal Gear Solid 2, 3 and 4. For YouTube, so I feel like this would be final closure. Um, but I have picked this one for a very unique reason. Um, my favorite YouTuber, Vash12349, played through, started his playthrough of the game about a few months ago, or actually completed the game a few months ago. I saw the first video and looked at it and thought, huh? What's this game? I never heard of Twin Snakes before. Boot up the video, and sure enough, it was basically Metal Gear Solid 1 with Son Sons of Liberty graphics, and Metal Gear Solid 2, up to when I played Metal Gear Solid 4, was my favorite Metal Gear Solid game. Um, and I do actually resoundingly love the series. So I thought, you know, it's one game that I haven't covered yet, and I can't obviously get a PlayStation 3 back, because what would be the point just for one game? And I'm, the reason I say that is because I am planning a future playthrough for the GameCube, which is going to be a redo, and only a couple of people know about it, but I'll save that for later. So I've pretty much, yeah, I picked this version. It's not the better version per se. A lot of people prefer the classic game to the remake, but I might as well. You know, the remake's basically Sons of Liberty kind of graphics and possibly controls. And I loved Sons of Liberty up to when I played Final Gear Solid 4, so hopefully that made sense. Um, bear in mind though, a couple of things before we start, and I know I'm talking for too long, but bear with me for one. Because I haven't played a GameCube for probably around 9 to 10 years. So the last game I remember playing for the GameCube was Sonic Heroes for my sister. And I haven't played a GameCube game since then. I think I had a couple of skins of Super Smash Bros. Melee when she had the GameCube. But she was more into Mario and Sonic and Smash Bros. And did, I, did, I never really expected her to buy Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Truth be told, I never knew this game was even made. I never knew it was even out. 
So I, I wouldn't have expected her to buy the game, one, because she's not really that sort of player, and two, I didn't even know the game existed. So, them's the breaks. Um, <clears throat> so bear with me that I suck in the early going because I, I haven't got used to the GameCube controller, I haven't used it for a while. Um, also bear with me that I have not actually watched a playthrough of the game. I think I did from Vash in the early going like years ago when I first ran into him, but I haven't watched the remake of the game yet. Um, I know it's basically the same cutscenes and the, and the same dialogue and a couple of different parts, but I've not watched actually watched the game. The last time I watched Metal Gear Solid 1 was years ago from Vash and I've completely forgotten what had happened in the story as such. And please bear in mind that I have played Metal Gear, through Metal Gear Solid 2, 3, and 4, so I kind of know in snippets um, what the game is about and who are people and stuff like that. So bear with me, I've played this game at all. I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 1 at all. I've never even touched it. Never played it at all. So I'm probably going to really suck at the early going, add to the fact that I've never really used a GameCube controller and it just makes it worse. Don't worry, I'm not going to be bashing the game with Hideo Kojima like I said somebody, but them's the breaks, you know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn the game in the first few, like, couple of hours. It will be a learning curve, so bear with me that I suck in the early going. Hopefully, uh, quality of the playthrough will improve as I go on, and hopefully it won't be a catastrophic fail like most of Metal Gear Solid 4 was. But like I said, I've never played the game, I don't know what to expect, and I've never used a game control before, so I will be learning for the best part of this playthrough. <laughs> Um, so bear with me. Alright, so I'm going to cut the video, I'm just going to double check the options that they're all set right. I can't set brightness adjustment because this is on a Nintendo console, so I can't really um, set up brightness unfortunately. So it will be probably really bright or really dark in some places, there's not much I can do about that. Alright, so let's finally, after so many years of <laughs> not actually touching this game whatsoever, Let's delve into Melgus Sod 1 with Twin Snakes. Playthrough begins next.